Okay, so here we are. Season 5 is in the books. 26 up, 26 down. There are about 104 episodes to go. Uh, as you can see, we hit episode 100 this season. I think it was about here-ish. We hit the halfway point of the whole Ding Dang series. So I think that's, what, nine cores left? Nine and a half cores? Something like that? Or like eight and a half? Oh, hold on. Let me do the math. A core is about 12 or 13 episodes. Eight times 12 is 96. So yeah, it's about eight and a half cores. Um, My overall thoughts on season five from what I had remembered going in was that season five is one of the best seasons. It's, it's really strong. There's a really great collection of episodes. The premiere is great. The finale is great. I'm not as sure about a lot of stuff in the middle, but I think it was great. There's a big fucking milestone episode and another really big milestone episode. We'll see. Having rewatched it, yeah, season five is pretty fucking good. I don't know if I would put it above... Like, when it comes to season two and season four, where do I put season five? I would put it above season three. Again, I think if the show has consistent quality, the one with the least amount of... Or excuse me, yeah. If the, blah, blah, blah. if the quality amongst seasons and episodes is about the same, the one with the least quantity of episodes is on the bottom by default for me. So season three is at the bottom. I like season five, I think, more than season one. I'm not sure if I like it more than two and four. But I maybe do? Because there's some really strong episodes here. I don't know. No, no, I can't even say it. I was about to say, it's like, I don't think it made me cry. No, it did. I, I remember exactly what did it, too. And we'll talk about that when we get to it. Like season two, it has an all-time terrible episode, which, weirdly enough, kind of endears me to the season more. Like, it, it having an all-time potentially bottom of the fucking barrel for the whole series, of, I, I don't even know if it's that bad. But having an all-time bad episode makes everything else stand out that much more, because, man, there are some certified fucking bangers just throughout the season. So let's start getting to them. But of course, before we do, we gotta explain what all these things mean. So bottom of the fucking barrel, as I always say, to me, there are three requirements. Number one, you gotta be at the bottom of this list of 26. Thing number two, you have to be actively disliked if you're my least favorite episode, but I still think you're kind of okay, or I still like it. It's not bottom of the fucking barrel. And then, of course, number three. It has to be dog shit. It has to be terrible. I have to vehemently, actively hate it so much that the idea of another episode in this bunch being worse is almost unfathomable to me. Like, I have to hate it like that. Which, again, in hindsight of the movies I watched last year, the fact that I had four bottom of the fucking barrel movies last year, it's, that's literally not how that works. How? How did this fucking happen? Why was Wish so bad? Why was Lightyear so bad? And then the two DreamWorks movies that I absolutely fucking hated, but that's bottom of the fucking barrel. F. It means it, it's a fucking failure. It means it's just really bad. And there's very few, if any, redeeming qualities. If you're an F tier with notable redeeming qualities, looking at you, Super Speedy Cider Squeezy 6000, it means you're bad enough to be down here. But you have a saving fucking grace putting you in here. Because generally, if something is not good but I don't completely hate it. That's usually what here is. Like D and C, I like to call the mid twins. D is the just, it's disappointing. It's mediocre. It's just not very good. Whereas C is generally more neutral. And if you've watched my videos, you probably noticed I don't usually put a lot of episodes in C tier. Usually I'm like, no, it's actively disappointing. It's fucking bad. Or one of the ones up here. It's very rare that I'm just like, yeah, I'm very neutral on this it's fine it's okay i don't know if we have any c tier episodes this season like there's a couple i'm like it's kind of okay but 
I don't know, like, it's pleasant enough that I want to give it maybe a little more, like, credit, but we'll see. B is, I respect it more than I like it. Like, you know, like, it's, it's, like, it's fine. I like, or it's, it's usually either it's kind of okay, but there's something really, really strong, like, kind of elevating it, or there are genuine things in this that don't work and or bother me. But the good elements are just so good that I have to give it its respect. A means I, I fucking love it. I can gush about it. I really like it. S, you're a genuine contender for being my favorite thing of whatever we're talking about. And then double S is this is the king shit. This is uh, the creme de la creme. I don't know what the fuck is going to get up here. I might have like five episodes up here, including the two partners. Because, uh... Let me just go ahead and start. This, there's no bones about it. This is an easy S tier episode. It might even be up here. I mean, I know I usually try to start by having things in the middle of the screen, but like, there's no bullshit. Cutie Map is fucking amazing. I, this to me is my favorite premiere since Return of Harmony. I don't think it unseats Return of Harmony for being my favorite season premiere. It gives it a fight. It really, really does. Um, so the things I love about this episode, before the obvious. <laughs> Number one, especially I feel like because I watched it almost right after the, like a day or two after the movie. And the movie is absolute fucking dog shit. One of the worst things to me about... I think my voice cracked there. One of the worst things to me about the movie is how it feels like a lot of the main six don't really do much. Like, sure, Pinky and Rainbow Dash get a big song. Rarity makes friends with the cat dude. Fluttershy is just, like, not in the movie. Applejack is basically not in the movie. Like, it's the Twilight Sparkle show. For better or for worse. I mean, Twilight's Kingdom was like that too. But Twilight's Kingdom is also Twilight's key episode. Like, th throughout the season, the rest of the main six got to contribute and do their shit. So I feel like it works there. In the movie, I'm like, oh man, I... I miss Applejack and Fluttershy. Like, there's this whole song about that. I feel like I brought this up in another tier list, but I probably... Hey, if you watch my videos, you know, I repeat myself a lot. You know, supposed to, supposed to be one, two, three, not one, two, back to one. Just repeating your damn self. Fuck damn it, I love Inside the NBA. Um, anyways, point. There is a whole song of a dude singing about how, like, I'm your new friend and I love to charm people and shit. I'm like, Applejack would see through that in a second. This dude is a fucking charlatan. Why is Apple, like, why is Applejack falling for this? Most of the rest of you, I get it, but gah. So, why I love this episode. It feels like, for the most part, everyone has something to do. Rarity and Rainbow Dash, not so much. Like, if you cut them, as much as I hate to say it because I love Rarity and Rainbow Dash. If you were to cut them, I don't think a whole lot would be missing from the episode's, like, plot and its tone. But I'm glad they're there. But uh, Applejack at one point comes up with a plan for um, we need we need to we need to get away from everyone without arousing suspicion. So I'm gonna get Pinkie Pie really fucking sick so we can you know like do some shit. It's like okay, she was able to come up with something clever. Twilight, I mean, she's the leader of the group. She's the main fucking character. She's got all she's got stuff to do. Fluttershy and Pinky, though, are kind of the MVPs of the team. Pin what I love is when they get to the town, which, I does the town even have a name? You know, it's in our town, in our town, but it I don't think it's named. I don't know. I, I, I know there's a Simpsons episode, which I'm not a, I'm not a big Simpsons guy, and that's not because, like, I fucking hate the Simpsons. It's my mom was like, no, I don't want you watching the Simpsons, and I just kind of never have. Every now and then I've seen an episode. I remember watching this one where Lisa became friends with like this other girl in her class. And they were basically playing Pr a Bridge to Terabithia where they had their own fantasy world. And I remember they called it Equalia. So that's just what I'm going to call Starlight's Village because they that sounds about right. So um, 
the main six land in Aqualia, and Pinky immediately is like, this place is wrong. This place is fucked up. I know people. People are my business. Shout out to the Ministry of Morale, by the way. Um, Boy, that's going to come back in another episode. Boy, that's going to come back in another episode in two very different ways. But, um, like, people are my business. I love people. I love parties. Remember my big song in season two, The Kicked Ass? I want to see everyone smile, smile, smile. I know what a smile is. I know the emotions that come from a smile. Those aren't smiles. This place is evil. This place is fucked. I love how she... T it takes her, like, less than a second to suss out that something is wrong. Her faces throughout the episode are great. Like, I can't... The faces in this season overall are fantastic. Again, this just this fucking screen cap is a great face. There's so many good ones in that episode. Like, Pinky kills it this season. I, I remember in season four, I was like, I don't know. There's definitely times when I don't think she's written that well. And my least favorite Pinky is when she's just screeching her lines. I feel like season five is just like a fucking redemption tour for Pinky, where she's able to be funny, she's able to be emotionally intelligent, she's able to be um, like super expressive, she's able to be not annoying. It's fantastic. And this episode is just like a great kind of encapsulation of that. And then you have Fluttershy, who's the other MVP of the episode, not just because of what she does for the plot. Which, I haven't really talked about the plot yet, but in that. <laughs> um, because she just goes to Aqualia and is like, I don't know, every pony seems happy. This is kind of nice. And when Starlight and the villagers are doing their song, there's just this little moment of Fluttershy just kind of moving her head to the music, smiling, having a good time. Pinky sees that Fluttershy is buying this, starts mean mugging her and is like, no, no, this is wrong. This is evil. Don't fall for it, Fluttershy. Like, she doesn't say anything, but it's all in the look. And I'm like, I... This works. This is so good. So the actual plot of the episode is, uh... Their cutie marks start glowing. And, like, pulsating. Because this thing, the map, is calling them to a certain place in Equestria. Which, again, I am calling Equalia. Which is literally shaped like an equal sign when you see from like a bird's eye view. It's here's a bunch of houses, here's a bunch of houses, but then there's another house at the end of the equal sign that's not part of the equal sign, which I'm like, that's that's just a really it's not even a gag. That's just like a really good visual representation that, you know, they're all equal, but some of us are more equal than others. And the head of the village, almost literally when you look at it from that bird's eye view, is this asshole. Starlight Glimmer. Glim Glam the Magnificent. Who, I, and not really at this point, although she starts to get there in season five. From what I remember, like, by the end of season six or seven, like, I think you're just my favorite character in the show. I fucking love Starlight. So, she is the head of this village. She is the head of Aqualia, where... No pony has a cutie mark, or I, they all do, but it's the same thing. It's just an equal sign. And there's these little things that you notice that differentiate Starlight from every pony else. Number one is her color. Seeing her here, you can tell, like, yeah, she still looks very bright, very pastel. Every pony else in the village is very muted in their color scheme. You can see she's wearing her hair. It looks totally normal. Every other mare in the village is specifically wearing braids. Every pony else has these big, expressive, fake smiles, and Starlight doesn't do that because she doesn't need to do that. It's, I just love it. Like, there's these things here and there where you're like, yeah, for, despite the fact that everyone is equal, there is clearly someone who is in charge and who is in power. This is fucking great. So... The village Aqualia is full of, like I said, their cutie marks are all equal signs, including Starlights. We'll get more on that in a bit. And it's, you know, like, no pony is better than everyone else because we're all equal. And that's how we're all friends. Because if someone is better than someone else, naturally, you know, with, uh, like, the differences in skill and the differences in personality, 
It'll lead to conflicts, and when someone is better than someone else, that means someone else is going to have to feel worse about themselves. And we don't want that. We want every pony to be happy. And they have this big musical number, and let me just say, like, there's feels like there's just so many big musical numbers in season five. And they're, like, all great. This one might be my favorite. Like, we started off on such a high note with the songs this season. <laughs> and like like I said, Fluttershy agrees where she's like, I mean, this might be kind of fucked up shit, but I don't know. The choreography is real good. So after that, uh, they end up meeting with a couple other people in the village, other ponies in the village, who miss their cutie marks. And would kind of like to have them back, even if just for a day. Like, there's this one uh, mare named Sugar Bell who's a baker. Just one of my favorite deliveries in the show. Because I remembered it. It's like, oh, what do you sell? Uh, we have muffins? And it's like, the way she says it makes it sound like she's about to say that they've got other shit there. It's like, hey, we got muffins, we got blah. And then she just stops talking and has this smile. I don't even think it's like the fake smile. It's like a genuine smile. And they're like, uh, okay. We'll have the muffins. <laughs> and the muffins are like fucking gravel. <laughs> we must feed him. We must feed him gravel. Uh, gravel. <laughs> Glad I quote that shit to each other surprisingly often. There'll just be times where we can just throw in the we must feed him gravel shit. But they're eating it. Pinky doesn't want to eat any more. And Applejack's like, look, Pinky, you got to take one for the team. And she's just so miserable. Uh, I think it's really funny. They end up going to the cave with all the cutie marks. And Starlight uses the Staff of Sameness. Which, if you've ever seen Ava, it just looks like the Spear of Longinus. And removes the cutie marks from the main six and giving them the equal signs. Then she traps them in a house that is basic. It is, <clears throat> excuse me. It is just playing like her mantras over and over. Like equality is the best. No pony should be better than anyone else. Differences breed contempt. And like all this kind of shit, to slowly break them and they're trying to escape and they find that they can't like Applejack's strength now that she's equal is about as strong as everyone else and it's not there and she can't even talk country no more because it saps like her personality and her uniqueness away and I remember there's this one part with Pinky where there's I, I think Rainbow Dash says something about someone like, man, it's just a barrel of laughs. To which Pinky, after getting like her energy sapped a couple times, is just laughs don't come in barrels. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> like it's sad, it's fucked, but it's funny. Um, they end up having Fluttershy play the mole. That like, hey, she actually wants to join your village, and Fluttershy, how could you? Blah 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 blah. To so she can earn Starlight's trust, get their cutie marks back. Re okay, so I'm sorry, I was actually trying to remember what the fuck happened in the episode. It's like, I remember what happens, but trying to get the order. So Fluttershy ends up finding out that Starlight's cutie mark is fake. It's just, um, like a decal she puts on her ass of the equal sign, but she has her actual cutie mark. So she stages a little thing where Starlight's cutie mark gets revealed. We just throw some water on it. Everyone else in the village is like, Starlight, the fuck? Like, you know, we trusted you. You know, we're all equal here in Equalia. And she's like, well, yeah, we're all equal because I make us equal. I keep us equal. You know, like the, the Staff of Sameness isn't some actual fucking artifact. That's my magic. I can do that shit. Also makes me go, how fucking strong are you that you can do that? Like, um... You took the cutie marks of six ponies at once that were all resisting you. How fucking strong is she? What the hell? And, uh, those questions never really go away. And as much as I love Starlight, I always kind of feel like it. her power level is kind of bullshit. 
don't get me wrong. I I might love the character. I might love her episodes. I gotta call bullshit where I see it. It's, uh, you know... Sorry, I'm taking a second because there was a reference that popped into my head and I'm like, I don't know if I want to say that. And the more I'm sitting here thinking like, do I say it? Do I not say it? It's just quiet. So the reference, of course, is to Outcast and their song Roses. You know, Caroline, Caroline, Caroline. With um, <clears throat> the chorus, of course, going, quote, I know you like to thank your shit don't stay. <laughs> But lean a little bit closer and see that roses really smell like poo -oo -oo, end quote. But it's like, yeah, I mean, the shit stank. I got to point it out. Anyways, my point. Starlight gets revealed and is trying to make her play. It's like, hey, it's okay that I'm a little equal, more equal than everyone else. Someone's got to be blah, 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 blah. So Twilight is using this to start making a friendship lesson about how it's like, yeah, you know, True equality and blah, 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 and friendship and trusting people. And as she's talking, you see Starlight's face go from panicked, I gotta take control of this, to just, like, seething angry. And in the middle of Twilight's friendship sermon, she just cranes her neck around and just goes, QUIET! And Twilight just stops talking, looks so confused, terrified, like, this... This is not supposed to happen. You're not supposed to interrupt me in the middle of a friendship sermon. What is this? So, Starlight takes this as her cue to run. The rest of the village go to get their cutie marks. But by that point, Starlight, the night before, had already taken the main six's cutie marks. And Fluttershy's like, yo, guys, this is where ours are. We gotta go get them. So they go and... The, some of the ponies in the village, let's see if I can remember their names, Sugar Bell, Party Favor, Double Diamond, and Night Glider, I believe that's right, help them trap Starlight. Starlight at one point, I think, attempts genuine murder, <laughs> but uh, Twilight uses a barrier and they get their cutie marks back and Starlight's like, fuck all of you! And you know, she's making her pleas to her friends, quote unquote, about it. It's like, no, like this was important. I did the right thing. Don't listen to them. Blah, blah, blah. And uh, she ends up escaping. She escapes. She goes into like the tunnels in the mountains where they're so complex. Who knows if we'll ever be able to find her again. Blah, 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 blah. And that's the end of the episode. I love everything about it. I think the song is great. I think the conflict is super interesting. There's definitely a theme in this season about cutie marks. You don't see it constantly like you see it here, 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 here. No, not there, not there. Maybe it's just those, but like that's that's a decent handful. <laughs> Excuse me. It's something that shows up a few times. I think it's pretty interesting, especially what they do with it in some of the episodes. Uh, I think it's very funny. I just think the whole village and just the cult mentality and how, like, the main Sixers trying to go about their day and then there's all these people just smiling at them and staring at them and not saying anything. Like, I've never seen Midsommar. This is what I imagine the movie is like, except a lot more fucking violence. I do really want to see it at some point. But, um... I I just love it. I love the atmosphere of this episode. I love the jokes in this episode. I love the crazy shit that happens. It's There's a reason I say it's my second favorite premiere. I don't think it quite beats Discord, but it it makes me think about it. It's an easy S tier. I, I kind of just want to put it up here, but I'm like, man, there's going to be a lot of shit that ends up going up here. Yeah, I'll just fucking keep it up there for now. Well, We'll see. We'll see how season five ends up looking, man. Castle, sweet castle. So this is the episode where Twilight's like, I don't really like my new home. Partly it's that I miss the library. I miss the Golden Oaks library. Part of it is it's just so big and empty. It doesn't suit me. It doesn't feel right. I genuinely feel like I'm a stranger in my own home. 
and the Remain 5 go, you know what? Let's let's fix the castle up. Like, let's try to throw in some shit to make it feel more like a home. So, and also, like, Spike, go take Twilight out on just, like, a nice day. Take her to the spa so she can relax, get nice and clean. And when the spa day is done, she can come home and we'll be done with the castle. Or at least, like, we'll be really close to being finished with it. And Spike's like, fucking bet. Let me eat my breakfast first because they're having a big old pancake thing. Which, there's this one really funny one where Picky's like, there's a pancake surprise. The surprise is I lost the fucking measuring spoon in the batter at one point. And there's a point where she's eating a pancake and bruh, 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 fucking spits it out. I think it hit like Twilight or Fluttershy in the face. She's like, look, I won! And they're like, I don't know, made me laugh. Um, so Spike goes off with Twilight. The Remain Five have this song about how they're making the castle a home and they're making it more of a home for them than for Twilight. Not on purpose, like, hey, we're moving in, but Rainbow Dash is like, all right, gonna make this place a home. We're gonna throw in some trophies, some pictures, like a football, all this kind of shit. Fluttershy's like, I'm gonna bring all the am aminals, rarity. I don't remember what Rarity brings. Just, like, nice drapes, curtains, like a big old embroidered poster. Applejack's just throwing in hay and shit. And Pinky's like, dude, I just hit a bunch of confetti cannons. I hit them so well. I don't remember where the fuck they are. I just know they're here. And after they finish the song and all their decorating, they see that, A, we only decorated one room, and it's this complete dog shit mishmash that looks worse than when we started. So, that leads to this one joke that I fucking love, where they're like, okay, uh, everybody remove one thing. So Rarity doesn't know what to remove, and Rainbow Dash is like, fuck you, let me pick something for you, so move something. And then Rarity's like, well, fuck you, if you're gonna move my shit, let me move another thing of yours. Applejack talks some shit, so then Rarity and Rainbow Dash team up to knock some of Applejack's shit out. I think they high-five right after, too, like, this is... I'm sorry, this is just fun. Like, they're all being super petty right now. This came from a good place, but now they're getting mad at each other. And they're like, okay, we... Girls, calm down for a second. We gotta fix this. Spike. So, like, they, they hit up Spike real quick. Can you stall her? Can you delay her to, like, sunset? Because we fucked up. And then, um, it's like Spike doing what he can to delay. And, like, it's pretty fun. Uh, the Remain Five trying their best. And there's a point where Twilight and Spike just go to the remains of the library. And it's it's a really somber scene. I, I think it's a very, very good scene. And what the Remain Five end up doing is they go to the fucking corpse of the library. They dig up the stump and the roots. And they hang it in the castle like a chandelier. And from all the roots, they have all these, like, little gems that when you look at them show, like, a, a different scene, like a picture of a lot of different episodes of the show. It's like, yeah, um, what we wanted to do is remind you of a lot of the good memories you had in the castle. So, like, do you remember this thing? Like, the party you had in episode one where you met everyone? I mean, you met them earlier in the episode, but you know what I mean. Uh, like, that's one. Uh, that time when you had that sleepover with... Rarity and Applejack, when we all found out we had poison joke tea, like, blah, 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 blah. And it's all, again, like, it's all hung from the roots of the library. I'm like, I, I really like that. That's just a neat idea. That's such a sweet, heartwarming idea. And then Twilight starts crying. She's like, guys, this, this is fucking perfect. This is exactly what I needed. And then you see that the Remain Five, uh, essentially, like, well... I mean, I brought all this shit to decorate the house, so I just kind of decorated this room. Well, I decorated that room, and Pinky's like, I still don't know where the fuck my cannons are, and that's the episode. It, it's just a good time. I can't put it up here or up here. It's not an episode where I'm like, dude, I love it. It's an all-timer. It's one of my favorites, but I'm like, I, I like it a lot. I, it's just such a heartwarming episode. I like that the just weirdness of the castle is addressed. And to me, given, given Twilight's personality, 
it makes a lot of sense for her to not be comfortable with this, and I really like what they did with it. Bloom and Gloom. The final episode in the Luna Crusaders trilogy, and I know I kept saying that the Tantibus was kind of the finale of it. There was one for all the Crusaders, and then a final one where it all comes together. We'll talk about this episode more. I was completely wrong. The Crusaders are barely fucking in it, and I was definitely surprised on the rewatch i was like okay I, I guess i just gaslit myself into this is what the episode was sure dog but this one this is apple bloom's luna episode it is an episode where for kind of the first time she starts to genuinely question if she wants a cutie mark she's like well what if i get something that sucks like that i genuinely don't want to do what if I get my cutie mark and my friends don't? Are we just not a trio anymore? Are we... Which I remember saying that in season four. And I think it was Flight to the Finish. It might have been a different episode. But I was like, what I really like about this episode is it gives the sense that they're not just doing this as... Like, they still want to find their fucking cutie marks. But it feels like it's less of, I want to do this just so I can get my mark, and then when I'm done, I'll, I'll kind of see you guys when I see you. It's like, no, they are genuinely friends. They are genuinely a trio. And I like that. I, I don't know if I said this in a tier list episode, or if I said this after watching one of season five's episodes, where I was like, they're, are they just the fucking Powerpuff Girls? I think I said that in a tier list, so I won't go further into it. But anyway, she, but now she's actually starting to question it. Like, wait, if I get my mark... Do they just not want to hang out with me anymore? Like, we're not the Cutie Mark Crusaders anymore because I ain't crusading for shit. Huh. And then her other fear is, what if I don't get an apple? Like, do would my family get rid of me? I mean, no, but... Would they? I, I, I don't know if this has ever come up. What the fuck would happen? <clears throat> So, she has a series of nightmares where this shit keeps happening. And actually, before that, Applejack sings this little lullaby about how, hey, sis, you know, your cutie mark won't change you no matter what you get. And I'm like, this is, this is fucking sweet, actually. This is so adorable. Fuck, I love this. Uh, so, that happens afterwards. And then, Apple Bloom is a series of nightmares. The first one... She is uh, working pest control, and Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon are harassing her about it, because of course they do. She's like, I don't fucking want this shit. So she runs into the forest, and comes across this shadowy figure. It's like, hey, if you don't want it, I can take it from you. I'm like, oh, we are doing Story of the Blanks today. Great! So that happens, and the pests get out of control, but now she lost her cutie mark. She can't save every pony, blah, blah, blah. Wakes up, has another cutie mark. I don't remember even what it was. I think it was potion. I think it was potion making. I was like, fuck. That's actually a really dope looking cutie mark. So I think there was an apple in the, like, in the vial, in the beaker. I was like, damn. I kind of wish she did get that. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I, I like what they do with them. I, I do, but that was cool. But the other two don't have their mark. So they're like, well... You can't hang out in the clubhouse anymore because we are not a crusader. So, um, fuck off. So she does and she gets her cutie mark removed so she can get it at the same time as her friends. But her friends get theirs and she's like, ah, fuck. And then she wakes up and I don't remember what it was, but it's not an apple. And her family tells her to leave. So at first it's Big Mac is talking in sentences where granny smith and applejack are just doing yup nope like at the end of ponyville confidential and that's funny and then they start just actually talking full sentences in big macintosh's voice i like to, this is getting fucking funny <laughs> like i'm sorry i should feel bad because apple bloom is having a nightmare about how there's a chance her family would just reject her and how that's terrifying her but the execution is intentionally funny, and boy, it's working. This is awesome. So that's when Luna shows up, and like, there's the shadowy figure and whatnot. She's like, Apple Bloom, that's your shadow. 
And boy, I remember the Persona 4 memes that came out after this episode. It's, what are you? I am a shadow. The true self. No, you're not me. Also, something I noticed in this episode, and then Clay brought it up. I was like, cool, I'm not the only one. Apple Blue, uh, Michelle Creeper, I think, is the name of her voice actress. Like, her voice sounded notably deeper in this episode. I was like, huh. That's weird. It was like, I mean, it's not weird. It's like, I, I guess the voice actors, you know, growing up. It's been five years since the show started. It makes sense. Which we'll definitely talk about. Like, this episode was the five-year anniversary. But I was like, huh, like, that's just, I don't know, it's just kind of interesting. But, um... I am a shadow, the true self. Luna's like, don't fucking worry about it. You're fine. Your friends have nightmares too. And Sweetie Belle has a nightmare of her going to sing, but then her cutie mark changes into like a fucking broom. And she, <laughs> sorry, I just remember that episode of SpongeBob, the talent show with you as the headliner. Cool. What's that? The headliner's the one that cleans up after the show. And then Scootaloo has one where, um, you know, she's racing and shit, but then I think it turns into, like, a unicycle or, like, an egg beater, so she starts doing something with that, and it fails, and Luna gathers all three into one dream and says some shit I don't super remember. I, I think she essentially says, you three are gonna be fine. You are gonna get your marks when you get your marks. They are going to fit you. You don't need to worry. And then Apple Bloom wakes up, and she and Applejack kind of sing that lullaby back to each other. I'm like, this is this is a really sweet episode. Yeah, from like minute four, you know exactly where it's going. But I, I don't know. I still like the execution. Like, I like the nightmares Apple Bloom has. Because these are things that you think, yeah, like they've never really discussed this. Like her, okay, her freaking out that her family would abandon her. That's just don't think about your life after 9 p.m. kind of thoughts. But the, yeah, what if I get something I don't like? Is my friendship, like, is the group I've bonded, like, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, Persona, I was about to say, like, social links. Like, the social link with my friend group. Does that end when I get my mark? Because whenever we hang out, like, we, it's something we constantly talk about and are thinking about. This is what brought us together. Is it the only thing keeping us together? I don't know, I like that she thinks about this, that this is all addressed. Again, the Persona 4 memes do a lot for me. Little Lullaby, I think, is so sweet. I fucking love this episode. I really do. Now, can I argue that it's my favorite, like, when this shit happened? I don't know, maybe not. But I do feel like this is... I could put this in S. Now, as we start to fill out the ranks, because fuck Season 5 is good... Maybe it'll end up going down to A, but I'm going to put it up there for now. Fuck. <laughs> I'm not trying to put it down there, I swear. Tanks for the memory. So this is the episode where Rainbow Dash learns that uh, Tank has to hibernate. And she decides that, well, like, I, I'm going to miss him for a few months. I, I don't want to do that. So... I'm going to ask Fluttershy. Well, Fluttershy's like, yeah, I mean, that'll happen. You don't know shit about animals. Let me go to the vet. Vet, yeah, this is what's going to happen. You don't know shit about animals. Then she gets to the point where she realizes, okay, he's going to hibernate. What if I just stop winter? What if uh, I literally stop the advent of winter? And, you know, like the joke I was making with Clay is that, you know, I've got to keep winter from coming but then she actually makes that fucking face of like oh oh yeah that is 100 intentional she's making a grinch face so she has a song and it's her first solo song in the show about how she's stopping winter and being a fucking eco terrorist and it doesn't work so she goes to the weather factory in cloudsdale and is an eco-terrorist actually fucking up with the weather? And it doesn't work, but she gets away with it scot-free. And then she's, uh, then her friends visit her in her house where she doesn't want to come out because she's crying that she has to say goodbye to her pet. 
And Fluttershy just kind of says, Rainbow, you have to say goodbye. And Rainbow Dash starts crying, and they're like, Fluttershy, that was kind of harsh, wasn't it? I don't think so. And, and not in like a, man, Rainbow Dash is a piece of shit, but like, look, if there's one thing I learned from my key episode is that sometimes you gotta give someone a harsh truth. If I know Rainbow Dash, I know that this is what she needs. Like, look, she and I are tenured homies. She does not put up with my shit, and I respect that. I don't have to put up with her shit either. And she'll respect that too. But then seeing her best friend cry, Fluttershy starts crying, and then Pinky and Rarity are like, man, seeing Rainbow Dash cry is one thing, but I'm seeing Fluttershy cry, and my heart's broken. So they all go for a group hug, and Applejack starts to tear up a little bit, and then just kind of goes like, mm. Twilight looks at her, you gonna cry too? Nah, I'm good. And I think Pinky at that point's like, Twilight, you heartless bitch. Why aren't you crying? Me? What about Applejack? She's not crying. She cries on the inside, Twilight. And it just cuts to Applejack. It's true. And like, that's a really funny line. I'm like, wait a second. She cried in Apple Family Reunion. Actually, she started crying and then covered her face so no one could see her cry and it kind of reinforces her thing of like, you know, she's very emotional. She feels this shit. She just tries to hide it. You know, I, I'll, I'll let it slide. Also, I'm sorry. Just like that joke is really funny to me. And so the episode ends with Rainbow Dash burying Tank. Like, you know, he goes into the ground to do his hibernating and she's like reading to him like by his fucking grave i don't really know how else to say it while everyone else is going about their day and that's the episode so let me talk about why this episode is phenomenal number one the rainbow dash grinch face that's just fucking funny reason number two rainbow dash gets a fucking song that's great reason number three the whole it's true crying scene it's amazing and reason number four this is not an episode about my pet is going to hibernate and i have to say goodbye to him for a few months this is an episode about death and having to say goodbye to someone you love a pet a grandparent a parent a friend someone that you know is on their way out and refusing to accept it and like there is like denial <laughs> There is anger. There's even a point where, like, Rainbow Dash, like, I'm, like you seem really angry. Angry? Who said anything about being angry? And then she has to, um, she's bargaining and, like, trying to stop Winter from coming. Which there is this one line where Twilight's like, Winter is coming. I'm like, uh, that's, I get it. That was a little on the nose. I didn't really laugh at that one, I won't lie. Uh, there's depression when she's fucking crying. And then there's acceptance. Like, yeah, that's, uh, that's all five stages I, I mean, Tank shows up later, so it's not like he's dead, dead. Like, this is an episode that is clear, at least to me, like, this feels like clearly a metaphor for death. To the point where they fucking bury the turtle. Tortoise. Oh, whatever. They bury the turtle at the end of the episode. And I think it's actually a really interesting look at that. And I don't know. It's, it's the kind of moral where you look at it and go... That's not really, like, a moral per se. <laughs> like, this is how you should live your life. But it's, it, it's like, an important thing to talk about and discuss. Like, an important life lesson still. I, I don't know. I guess that is what a moral is. There's a lot I really love about this episode. But let's talk about the bad. Let's talk about the stuff that could maybe put it here. First off... This is the first time Tank is hibernating. So that means most of season two, all of season three, and all of season four take place within the same year? Huh? I mean, sure, maybe, but what fucking timeline is that? Like, I don't know. Like, it makes me really question the timeline. Which is something I haven't done since Fall Weather Friends took place two episode two two episodes after Winter Wrap Up. I'm like, huh, oh, that's that's interesting. 
Uh, like I said, the winter is coming joke just didn't make me laugh, but... Uh, I don't think Rainbow Dash is this stupid. Or this reckless. Like, I get it. It's Rainbow Dash. Wasn't... I think the reason I hate this episode is because of how much I love Wonderbolt Academy. Wonderbolt Academy, to me, is the maturation of Rainbow Dash. It is her saying... I can be, like, being more self-aware and understanding that being reckless and stupid is a bad thing. Even if it might help you be stronger, it might help you be better, it might help you get ahead, there's just shit you don't do. And this is the same person who, within the same year, I guess, is like, nah, I'm gonna go commit eco-terrorism. Like, okay, I feel like all, like, the minor shit she does to stop Winter from coming in a futile effort, like, it's it's a little dumb, but okay. I feel like it could get her fired from her job. She shouldn't be doing it. And then, again, you get to her sneaking into the factory and actively breaking shit. I'm like, I'm sorry. This is a level of dumb and reckless that goes beyond, I think, what this character is capable of at this point in her life. Like, season one, season two, Rainbow Dash, I could see it. I really don't see it after Wonderbolt Academy. I think... And it's the fact that she gets away with it. I'm like, there's no repercussions for this. I'm... I'm sorry. This... My suspension, my suspension of disbelief for Starlight being like the most ooga booga unicorn of all time, is already kind of stretched. Here I'm like, it is stretched fucking thin. There's a lot of, th- and that's maybe not a lot of things in terms of the quantity of stuff I don't like about this episode, but the quality of stuff I hate really brings it down. But boy, there's a lot of things I love. So I think I would put it here. I think we do actually have a C-tier episode. I'm kind of neutral on it. Not because it's just like, eh, it's fine, it's whatever. It's just, man, I could kind of go either way. So I think I'll meet it at the middle, and I'm about to drink some water. Ugh, let me do that again. Yeah. Now we get to this. Appaloosa's Most Wanted. Trouble Shoes. This is a Crusader episode. This is their first group episode because this was more of a solo outing for Apple Bloom. Where they go to the rodeo and Appaloosa! Be, um, because like, hey, we can be maybe get our cutie marks and some rodeo shit and Applejack's like, I don't know, it's kind of dangerous. I can do this shit. Like, I've been doing it all my life. Like, I'm fucking strong. I don't want to see my little sister get hurt. And as we've established in one of the worst episodes of season four, she's very protective of her sister. And it's like, I also have to look over after two other children. One of them is my friend's sister. The other is my other friend's more or less sister. I'm responsible for the two of you. I don't want you to put yourselves in danger. Man. But, uh. The rodeo might not happen because there's this dude named Troubleshoes who always shows up at rodeos and like fuck shit up. And they're like, hey, we can get our cutie marks in catching varmints. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll catch a criminal and throw his ass in jail. So they sneak out to do that, which Applejack is pissed when she finds out they did that. Understandable. So they meet up with old Troubleshoes Clyde, who's this big motherfucker, and it turns out he's a klutz. Bro's cutie mark is literal bad luck. It is an upside-down horseshoe, and he's like, look, like I, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a rodeo star. Like, I've always been called to the rodeo. It's something I think is wonderful, and it's fun, and it's beautiful. But because of my bad luck, not only am I not skilled enough, but I just kind of ruin things when I'm near them. I'm not trying to ruin the rodeos. I just want to participate, but I can't. So the Crusaders are like, well, can you take us back into town, please? Because we don't know how to get back. Also, that fucking sucks. So he takes them back into town, but he gets arrested for 
all the trouble he's caused and for kidnapping and the crusaders are like eh, we should we should probably tell them he didn't kidnap us we snuck out on our own but we can we can tell that a little bit later so they help break him out of prison I mean, not really prison more like the county jail but they break him out of jail dress him up as a clown so he can join the rodeo as a rodeo clown it's like man this dude's funny as hell so he joins the rodeo as a rodeo clown and gets a lot of slapstick and everyone's laughing at him, but I guess they're laughing with him and everyone forgives him and the Crusader's like, yeah, he didn't actually kidnap us and Applejack's like, cool, grounded, grounded, grounded. And they're like, man, it sucks that we're grounded and we didn't get our cutie marks and rodeo things, but we helped someone find the beauty and truth in their own cutie mark. Man, isn't that a real... Wait, isn't that a really nice and neat thing that we did? Isn't there a non-zero chance that this will ever come back again? And uh, that's the episode. Feels kind of weird to say this after I went on a little bit of a spiel about how there are no C-tier episodes. This is the most C-tier episode of all time. It's, I don't think it's bad it's not even like man this is mediocre or so dis it's just kind of nothing and it's like it, again in hindsight it's very very important <laughs> but is it particularly funny no did the new character they introduce like man is this a guy that like i really liked this character and like want to see him come back like, no i don't hate him but he's very neutral the idea of the crusade like there's something about the moral of this episode, like its theme, and I don't know if I love it, hate it, or both. On the one hand, it's saying, you are not gonna, you might not achieve all your dreams, and you know what? That's okay. You can do the best you can, you can adapt, maybe you can get something adjacent to your dream. Like, if, you, if you've ever seen Shiro Bako, it's an anime about making anime, like about a, a production studio. And it's an all-timer for me. I love Shirobako. But that's one of the things that Shirobako is about. It's like, look, I wanted to be in the anime industry as an animator. And I couldn't cut it. I wasn't good enough. So I'm doing something else that's still a part of the industry. So I'm living my dream, but not quite the way I expected. And also, you know, about how soul-crushing being an adult is. Uh, again, Shirobako is phenomenal. Highly recommend it. I know it's part of a trilogy, quote-unquote. I think it's just... I don't remember what if there's an official name for the trilogy. I think I've just heard it's about, like, adult women working. I think the first one is about working in a bathhouse, and I haven't seen it. The second is Shirobako, and the third is called Soccer Quest, which I is an anime I refer to as the best damn thing mankind has ever made or could ever hope to make. Don't worry about it. Unironically, though, I fucking love Quest. But, um... That's kind of what the moral of the episode is. And I like it, but there's also that part of me that's like, hey man, it's okay that you have really bad luck because you can just have people laugh at you as you make an ass of yourself and you fall over. It's totally fine. I'm like, I, I don't know. It, it feels like it's trying to be nice, but it's kind of mean-spirited in its own way, and I don't know, it's... I don't even, it's not even like, man, I, it's so mean-spirited that I fucking hate it. Or, like, it's so kind of bass backwards, like, the way that Trixie's is. It's just, fine. Uh, I think this one is called Make New Friends But Keep Discord? That sounds about right. So the plot of this episode, it's, it's time for the Grand Galloping Gala, and all of the main six have tickets. So, I actually don't know who Twilight's bringing? I don't know if, like, she has a... T I, I mean, Spike had a ticket in Season 1, so I assume they're all Gucci. So S Twilight doesn't really have a plus one, from what I remember. Applejack's bringing your sister. Rarity is bringing your sister. Rainbow Dash is bringing her sister. Pinky... Pinky is bringing Maud. So we get a... We get to... We do get to see a little bit of Maud in this episode. It's great. Okay, so that's three. Maud. Twilight. And Fluttershy. So Fluttershy and Discord are having like their, I think it's like their weekly tea time. She brings up the gala and Discord's like, cool, so I'm going with you as your plus one, right? 
right? Fluttershy was like, no, I'm bringing someone else. I'm bringing my friend named Tree Hugger. Which, there's a fucking character in this who, the way she talks, man, you know, she kind of talks like this and is all about her, you know, getting her, like, her chakras and, like, feeling people's energy and her name is Tree Hugger. I'm like, okay, this was... Whoever made this decision needed a raise. This was amazing. <laughs> like, I fucking love this. And Discord being very jealous that he's not Fluttershy's plus one. And you can see this as he's being like a jealous boyfriend. Or you can see it as it feels like it's mostly intended as, wait, but I thought I was your friend. What do you mean you have other friends? Like, I get it. The The rest of the main six and Spike, like, those are your homies. But I thought it was them and then me? What do you mean there's someone else? That's not okay. So Discord goes to the rest of the remain five. is like, hey, can I have your other ticket? Hey, can I have your other ticket? They're like, uh, we're bringing our sisters. I'm also bringing my sister and Twilight. I don't remember what even what happens with Twilight. I don't even think he really asks her. <laughs> So, uh, Discord goes back to his home chaos dimension where his ticket does get delivered. He's like, it's here! Why was this late? And I love that little moment. It's this little moment of, you see the genuine menace and threat that Discord can be for a second. And then that, the poor male pony got amphibiated in the corner of the screen. Like, oh wait, they might have just fucking died. Yo. There's this visual gag when discord is in his house where he's doing the dishes and he takes a clean dish and he washes it and then he puts it in the pile with the dirty dishes because now it's dirty and he does that a few times just as he's talking and to me i'm like that is a perfect discord joke it is not just a re and again like i do enjoy the references but I'm like it's maybe a little more disney than it or it's like more genie than it is discord but it's just here is weird fucking chaos shit that you look at it and i, I kind of had to think about it for a second I'm like wait is he washing the clean dishes to make them dirty i fucking love this so much and it's not even the focus like he's it's just something that's going on while he's talking it's gold it's perfect i love it so he shows up with his plus one which is the smooth this is like oozy green creature and He's trying to basically say to Fluttershy, look, Fluttershy, ain't you jealous? I got my own plus one, too. And Fluttershy's like, yo, dope! Let's all hang out together. And Tree Hugger's like, yeah, dude, let's all hang out together. Which is making Discord more and more mad. Meanwhile, you have Twilight, who, as you can see here, just fucking mean mugging him. Like, Discord, what the fuck is that? This is Smooze. He's a friend of mine. Okay, Discord, I know you and I are friends. Like, we're good. But if you fucking try anything, I swear to me, I will fucking end you. <laughs> and you know what? Because I remember the first time I watched this episode, I was like, huh. Remember Twilight's Kingdom and how they became friends and now that's how she got her last key? Well, now that she got the key, she doesn't need that. Fuck this. It made me really mad. Watching it again, I'm like, you know what? I actually really like her friendship with Discord. Because of how weird it is. And not just with, like he's the god of chaos. Of course he has weird friendship. It's just... I genuinely feel like the way they see each other is... I have a lot of respect for you. Like, you are this god of chaos that can do a lot of shit. I respect that. I don't like you necessarily because me like being Twilight like the, of someone who is very anal in her organization and like being neurotic and shit. You are the antithesis to everything that I am. But if you're not actively causing trouble, then you and I don't have a problem. Would I rather spend my time with you? No, I really wouldn't. But if you need me, I will be there in a second to help you out. Because whatever Tyrak had planned for you, you don't deserve it. 
And Discord, for his part, is like, look, you're a fucking Prince Alicorn princess. I respect the shit out of that. Also, after I betrayed your friends, like, I betrayed your entire nation and your friends specifically, you still chose to forgive me. You and I are good, Twilight Sparkle. Now, I'm still a dickhead. I'm still gonna mess with you every now and then. But you and I are good. And that's just the vibe I get from them. And again, like, Discord shows up to the gal. He's like, look, I'm actually not trying to cause chaos. I'm not trying to fuck up your party. I just wanted to go and hang out with Fluttershy. But I've been replaced. So I want to make her feel like I've replaced her. And it's not working. And it's making me more and more mad and more desperate. Uh, like, the smooth is fucking shit up. And Discord's like, look, I'm not even trying to do this. I've just been neglecting him, which makes me a bad friend, might be. Um, he does a really bad stand-up routine, but Discord, or not Discord, uh, he thinks it's funny. Celestia thinks it's funny. And Celestia at the end of the episode's like, yeah, I invited Discord. I told you during best night ever, I think the gala fucking sucks. I wanted to see what Discord would do. And I had a great time. Like, I love that shit. I re you don't get a lot of emphasis on the relationship between Celestia and Discord. But the little bits you get are like, I, I just really like their vibes and their energy. But Discord, during his comedy routine, nothing's working. A knock-knock joke fails. He's like, it's the most basic of jokes. To which Mod says... You're the most basic of jokes. And just fucking cooks him in front of everybody. And it's great. Discord drag... Like, he picks up Tree Hugger and is going to send her to an alternate, like, fucking Muppet dimension. <laughs> Which definitely got a laugh out of me and Clay. And then Fluttershy is like, Discord, what the fuck? What is wrong with you? Did you genuinely think that because I had another friend and invited that friend to hang out that I didn't want to hang out with you anymore? To which he says, Yes. That is genuinely how I understood that. And to me, it's the kind of thing where... It, it really does just kind of... I don't want to say justify. It doesn't make what Discord was doing okay. But I'm like... I understand you a little bit better. Yeah, again, talking persona terms, social links. As he even says, he's like, I don't get this friendship thing. I am genuinely new to it. I actually thought you were kind of telling me to go fuck myself. And I didn't like that. It didn't make me happy. So maybe I should have communicated my feelings better. Maybe you could have communicated to me a little bit better. Just letting me know that we're still good. Because I didn't understand that. But you know what? Might be. And then he goes to hug Tree Hugger. And she's like, ah, I'm gonna, like, need some space and some time before I can hug you from any place of authenticity. He's like, that's fair! Smooze, I'm sorry I'm a bad friend. And the smooze gives him a smooch. And I'm like, I... That's basically the episode. It, it's fun. It's a good time, actually. I, I like it quite a bit. I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, I don't know. I, I know it's Discord and he's a dickhead, but it's just not doing it for me. It, it, I've noticed that a lot. There's definitely been a few episodes where I'm like, this episode is not that good. And I rewatched it. I'm like, this episode is all right. Or like, no, it's actually really good. I'm really glad I've been rewatching the show. There's definitely some that still suck. I still hate Owl's Well that ends well. I still hate Merduel, but this one... This one's all right with me. This is an A-tier episode. It's a ding-dang good time. The Lost Treasure of Griffinstone. So while this is the first map episode with the map calling people, this is the first one where it's not a whole group outing. It is Pinky and Rainbow Dash getting called to the land of the Griffins. So as you can probably imagine, it's a Gilda episode. It is Rainbow Dash fixing their relationship with Gilda. And a lot of that is Pinky kind of trying to bring them together and bridge that and i like that a lot i don't want to make it as pinky is the reason that they broke up and i feel like it's less of pinky was this toxic piece of shit and it's her fault but it is pinky's presence is what was like <sighs> pinky's presence is what was prickling gilda 
and eventually got to a point where Rainbow Dash noticed. Again, there was other shit going on. Blah, blah, blah. The fact that Pinky is the one to really play Peacemaker, I think, helps a lot. The little bit we see of the Griffins, like, yeah, we just... We tend to be more isolationist kind of creatures. We gotta hate each other. We're very money hungry because we all want to get the fuck out of this shithole. I don't know. I, I just kind of like this. You get a little bit of a flashback of Rainbow Dash and Gilda as little, little babies. And it's just really cute. It's just really adorable. Like, I, I like this. This is another just good episode. I, I don't really have much to say. Part of it is like, I, I just want to get the slice of life. But part of it is I don't have a whole lot to say. I don't know. Maybe it's more of a B tier episode. For me, it's like I respect it a lot for the whole Rainbow Dash and Gilda getting their shit fixed. But I'm like, is this an episode where like I really love it? I don't know, but like, I I like it. I think that's it. I'm like I like it. I don't think I have I liked it as much as these two. Like this is super fuzzy. This was just fun. This one is good. This one is it's solid. It's good. It's way better than these. I think this is fair. Let me fucking talk about Slice of Life. Okay, so... As you can see, it's episode 100. The plot of the episode is it is Cranky and Matilda's wedding. Shout out to Smile, Smile, Smile. I know it's not the name of the episode, but it's how I think of it. However, the pony that did the invitations got the date wrong. So every pony thinks that the wedding is today. So Cranky and Matilda are scrambling to get their uh wedding today and the person that fucked up the invitations is derpy because this is an episode about the background characters it is about <laughs> like the main six are in the episode twilight gets one sentence rainbow dash gets one sentence the other four don't say anything they just laugh the crusaders get a couple quick lines where they talk about how it's like, hey, what are the main six worrying about? Like, well, it's either a monster attack and a friendship problem. And if it's a friendship problem, the whole thing will be cleared up in about half an hour or so. Which is a joke I fucking love. It is it is mostly about characters in the background. If you watch this... Uh, this is an episode where if you watch it and you have a good time, but you don't really get it, you're like, so... Why are they focusing on these characters? Like, I, they're just... Oh, sorry. There was, like, shit in my throat. Here, let me get some water. Oh, that was fucking gross. There's this lengthy scene where Matilda is talking to the sea serpent from episode two. Two. And, uh, his name is Steven Magnet. And they call attention to that a few times. And, I don't know, like, it's kind of a funny name, don't get me wrong. If you watch that scene and you think to yourself, like, this is kind of fun, like, seeing this character again, and, I don't know, I guess, like, the, the name Steven Magnus, I don't know, it's kind of funny, and, I, I, I don't know, I like this scene, but I don't really get it, and that's how you feel about the episode as a whole, then you are a fan of Friendship is Magic. If you watch this episode... And you get it. You're like, I understand why they are focusing on a lot of these specific characters. Why Derpy is like the one that sets the plot in motion. Why she's hanging out with the doctor and they're calling him doctor. And he's talking about time and he's wearing the fucking sweater from Tom Baker, I think is his name. And he's saying like Alon Z and shit. And you see Lyra and Bon Bon getting their own thing. And they're hanging out together and they're best friends and emphasizing how close they are. They're so touchy feely with each other. Um, And then you see... Octavia and Vinyl Scratch getting a lengthy scene together where they're roommates and they're like doing shit with their music. If you watch it and you get it, you're a brony. Because that is what this episode is. It is we as the creators know our fans. And we we get it. We know all the the memes. 
the fan art, all of that shit, we see it and we love it and we appreciate it so much because we would not have hit triple digits if it wasn't for y'all. Thank you so much for your support. This one's for you. And even then, there was some shit in the episode where it's like, look, Lyra and Bon Bon, they're going to be together. They're going to be best friends. That's for y'all. The way Lyra sits on a chair compared to everyone else, that's for y'all. But we're going to do, we're going to do our own shit too. Like the whole, my name isn't Bon Bon. I'm Special Agent Sweetie Drops. Like I've literally never heard of this before, but fuck, this is funny. I love how absolutely insane the Special Agent Sweetie Drop shit is. Um, there's the entire scene with Gummy and his existential crisis, and I think it's one of the funniest scenes in the entire show. Again, Steven Magnet, the way he got his name is there was just like the episode on YouTube, episode two, and like weird, terrible YouTube captions, which I will say made watching um, Pokemon Journeys way funnier because, man, there's some weird YouTube captions. Like, there's this one where... It was like an episode about Chloe's Evie and the weird caption was something along the lines of every, like, I think about my penis every time I think about Evie evolving. Like, it's something weird like that. It's like, what the fuck? You know, insert Vaporeon copy pasta here, you know? But, um, it was a weird YouTube caption that when the sea monster was on the screen, the caption just said Steven Magnet. So for five years, that was his name. And that's why they like, okay, we're going to bring him back. And we are going to call attention to the fact that this name, this name that y'all came up with is fucking canon. You think this dude with the hourglass cutie mark looks kind of like David Tennant? We're going for it. He hangs out with Derpy a lot in fan works. Cool. They're hanging out together. There's a character in this show named Rose. Okay, Rose Tyler then. When he has his big, like, epiphany at the end of the episode, he's going to be telling it to Rose. There's so much shit like that in this episode. Even Button Mash makes a cameo in this episode, which, to be fair, he was not just a fan character. He actually did exist and everything, but... It's like, oh, shit. He's here. There's this fucking scene where there's, like, this montage of a bunch of shit. The fucking Twilight is in there. And there's like this one frame image and Clay had no idea what the fuck it was like. What the fuck was that? <laughs> I had to explain it to him because he, he didn't know about it. It's like, yeah, it's just some of the actual people that work on the show in a live action wearing horse head masks. <laughs> That's just in this quick sequence. <laughs> um... I remember when this episode was done, I had said to Clay... I have not enjoyed an episode of this show this thoroughly from start to finish since Lesson Zero. There have been some phenomenal episodes since then. There was a phenomenal episode earlier in the season. The, the slice of life is why this can't be a double S tier episode. I feel like at this point in the show... A hundred and something episodes in. This is a top five episode. And honestly, I feel like it's a top three along with Return of Harmony and Lesson Zero. I think those are my top three. I don't know the order. Because I feel like on any given day, I might be like, oh, Lesson Zero is the best. And I might be like, ah, I do think Return of Harmony is better. Like, man, Slice of Life is such a fucking perfect episode. I love it. I really do. Uh, boy, it's wild that Princess Spike is right after because this is dog shit. This is the worst episode of the season. This is the bottom of the fucking barrel. It is not even hard. It's not... It's what I thought Equestria Games was. It's what I remembered 
Equestria Games being. The premise of this episode is there's a princess summit with all four princesses and people from all around Equestria, like Winneapolis, and it's a fucking Minnesota pony. I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this. I hate the Vikings, because I'm a Saints fan. Of course I hate the Vikings. But fuck, this Minnesota shit is funny. And uh, she's paired with this dude from New York who's... Cutie Mark is a fucking slice of New York pizza. <laughs> like, fuck. I really like that. That's really funny. Well, the premise of the episode is uh, Twilight organized this whole shit. Princess of Friendship. Y'all know what it is. And she is exhausted. So Cadence goes to Spike and is like, look. Twilight needs to be at full strength for like the big reception or whatever. Can you make sure that she's undisturbed for a few hours? Like that she can just sleep, she can rest, and get refreshed. And Spike says, bet. I can do that. So, he starts uh, trying to do shit. He's like, hey, there's like some ponies playing polo. That can be kind of loud. Can you guys move it over here? Hey, there's a guy working construction. Boy, that's really fucking loud. Can you maybe do it later? Because I don't want Twilight to wake up. And it's all genuine. Then, a couple ponies, specifically the Minnesota one and the New York one, are like, hey, we were both booked at the same time to give speeches. And we don't know what the fuck we need to do. Can you, like, go get Twilight and ask her, like, what we should do? And Spike's like, ah, fuck, okay, I'll do it. So he goes, and he's trying to talk to Twilight, but he's like, she's still sleeping. I don't want to wake her up. Caden said not to wake her up. Ah, uh, fuck, 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 fuck. Okay, I'll just say some shit. Um, Twilight says to give your speech at the same time. Really? Yeah, that's what she said to do. Alright. If the princess said it, we'll do it. And they do it, and the whole thing is a disaster, blah, 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 and... Other ponies are going to Spike for advice on things. And slowly but surely, Spike's like, you know, people actually give a shit about me and what I have to say. Huh, being Princess Spike is pretty dope. And there's a point where Cadence is like, now Spike, you're doing this for the right reasons, right? And he's like, yeah! And then he starts just being selfish, like getting massages and free gems and shit and... And then through, like, Final Destination-esque Death Design Grand Master Tier bullshit. The decisions he made while genuinely trying to help Twilight and with no malicious intent or ulterior motives backfire. Cause this big-ass statue to fall, cause flooding everywhere, and... People are now trying to get Twilight's attention. An angry mob shows up. And she's like, what the fuck is going on? And Spike's like, it was my bad. And I learned an important lesson about not letting power go to your head. And blah, 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 blah. And I would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for like the sheer numbers of nat ones that God rolled in a row to make this happen to me. And there's also the fact that the decisions I made while being selfish and with ulterior motives were not what backfired. Honestly, what backfired is Cadence wanted me to not let Twilight get disturbed, but didn't really like have a backup plan for when people wanted to talk to Twilight. Maybe sh I should have just told them to go speak to Cadence. Maybe Cadence should have just kind of told me that. Like, hey, if people need her, just send them my way or something. Thanks, Cadence. Yeah, I mean, I, I've talked about how I don't really like her. And this episode just doesn't really... I, again, like, the one thing to me that Cadence has going for her is the relationship with Twilight being just really genuine. I like it. But I'm like, man, you're a... Boy, you're really getting into Spike for... Things that he's maybe kind of doing, and then when he's doing them, they're not bad. Again, it's like Spike saying, I'm going to, like, on Order of the Princess, give me a massage. Being a dickhead, totally get it. 
then make that the actual thing that back i don't know how it would but again it's he's punished for doing the right thing essentially and it bothers me like i just this moral doesn't fucking work with what actually happened in the episode this is like boast busters this is like a bad season one episode but i thought we were past bad season one episodes by season three because you know i think there's a few in season two this episode's bad. It's not funny. The moral doesn't work. It's just another episode that makes Spike the Cosmic Chew toy. But unlike Equestria Games, which are where I'm like, okay, I have problems with this. But there's a genuinely really interesting look into Spike's psyche here. That honestly has a really hard-hitting moral of it. It does not matter how much people love you if you don't love yourself. Wow, that's like actually hits hard. What's the moral of this episode? Hey, uh, don't have ulterior motives and blah blah blah. It's it's just not good. It's it's fucking bad. Let's talk about party pooped. This is the episode with Prince Rutherford and the Yaks coming to Ponyville to make friends, and the Yaks are assholes, and if something isn't perfect they like trample all over it and i've heard some people say it's like is this just a metaphor for the fandom or like any fandom in general where someone might work really hard on something and then be like it ain't perfect it's trash you know kind of like how i was just saying this episode is trash and stomping all over it because it doesn't meet my specifications maybe and if so is that like a kind of a fun way of like making fun of the fans or fans in general or is it a really mean spirited take i don't really know this episode's fucking funny that's what i do know uh the facial expressions in this episode from pinky are great twilight has a couple really good ones like the whole i remember going into this episode and i was like oh it's the yaks i remember the yaks just being assholes and not funny and i'm re-watching like they're fucking hilarious like yeah they're assholes don't get me wrong but i'm cracking up dude uh the, the fucking scene when rainbow dash makes it snow on them and pinky's like look they can be they might be perfectionists they're like this isn't like how these beds aren't like yak beds this food isn't like yak food at least snow is the fucking same thing. This ain't yak snow. Go, 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 go. It's like, how the fuck did we get snow wrong? Is so funny. Uh, she makes this trek all the way up to Yak Yakistan. And on the way, she joins the Beatles, makes it big. And then the band breaks up due to creative differences all within the span of an afternoon. I'm like, yeah, uh cartoon logic it's funny we can make it work i'm like yeah that made me laugh this was great <laughs> and then she finally gets to yak yakistan after this arduous odyssey and again kind of like what happens here someone rolled some nat ones on a cosmic level and she gets bennett foddy and just falls her way all the way back to Bonyville. <laughs> and that made me laugh really hard and then uh her friends find the smile room which is she has this hidden room under sugar cube corner i'm like oh boy oh boy i'm getting cupcakes vibes where she keeps tabs on every pony it's like okay this is what this per this is uh this person's birthday this is when they move to town this is the things they like this is the things they're afraid of and twilight scared of chick quesadillas because they're just so cheesy and i'm not gonna lie i don't think it's that funny i'm like that's a like it's kind of funny but also just what but the face she makes i think is really funny when she says it and i'm like huh pinkie pie having like tabs on every pony and seeing what they're up to when has her own files and all that shit this is just the Ministry of Morale. Oh no. Oh no. Fallout Equestria's canon. Oh no. Fallout Equestria's canon. <laughs> um, and then Pinky ends up going into the room and she's like, okay, I know what I need to do. I'm trying to make them feel comfortable here by making things like home. 
but instead of trying to make our home feel like instead of trying to bring their home to us i gotta just show them like what our culture is like and what it's like to be here and maybe they'll appreciate that because we can't replicate what their home is like but we can show them what we're all about which i don't know how i feel about that as a moral like on the one hand i get it it's show people like i don't know it's like don't conform to what other people want a hundred percent or it's like don't bend over backwards to please somebody just kind of be yourself and whatnot like yeah but i don't know there's also this weird sense of don't i don't know like don't try to share like don't try to experience someone else's culture because it's gonna not work i, I don't know it's I think it works if you think too hard about it. It's maybe a little questionable, but I think it works. It makes me laugh. And like after Pinky, so Pinky gets, the way you get into her smile room is by a slide. So Pinky's like, oh, I know what I have to do. She jumps on the slide and just slides up, which I love that. Like good Pinkie Pie humor is just like, it's like with Discord washing the dishes. It's just something, like, really quick that's visually, like, wait, what the fuck? And that makes me laugh. And then there's this pause with Fluttershy asking, so, I don't know, did we just, like, walk up the slide? And, I don't know, it just made me laugh. This is a really funny episode. I don't think I would put it up here. I, I don't think I can. I think it's a very strong right here. Then we get a mending. Uh, I guess I'm trying to put him here, not up there. Um, then we get a mending fences. This is the episode where Spike's like, "Man, Twilight, it's kind of funny that you're the princess of friendship because you were such a dog shit friends to your friend to your friends back in Canada." It's like, no, I wasn't. Oh, I don't even remember their names. Oh, I didn't even say goodbye when I went to Ponyville. I've never like written to them or said hello. Wow, I, I am a dog shit friend to them. I should do something about this. Like, I should go and make amends. I should amend these fences. And Spike's like, ah, I don't know. I think it's more, I, I think you're making this out to be a bigger deal than it is. Because it is Twilight. She's like, oh my goodness. They must be so sad. They must be heartbroken that I forgot about them. Like, I gotta fix this. So... They go to Canterlot to meet up with them, and they meet up first with Minuet, also known throughout the fandom as Colgate, because her mane and tail look like fucking toothpaste. I love Colgate. <laughs> I know there's this one fan game where you're playing as Minuet, and it's like a platformer, and there's a fucking Catherine reference in the game, and at one point she's like, I don't think good children should understand this reference, and I was cackling when I got to that shit. Anyways, point... Minuet, actually, did they say what she does? Because I feel... Did they say she's a dentist? Am I just... Cause I'm remembering that. And I'm like, wait a second. Did, did they actually say that she's a dentist? Because if so, that's such a funny fucking way of referencing the Colgate shit. Oh my god, I hope she is. I might have to check that later. I don't have my phone on me. Uh, anyways, they go see Minuet. She's like, Twilight! Hi! Dude, like, I have people who don't believe me when I say I used to be friends with you. Can we get a picture? Like, show off the wings. Really fluff them up. Like, I, I, I got a kick out of that. But so, essentially, Twilight's like, look, I'm sorry I ruined your life. And she's like, no, you didn't. I mean, sure, it was kind of sad when you left it and say goodbye. But that's just kind of who you'd always been. So, me and the girls were like, yeah, that's that's Twilight. Do you want to go see the rest of the girls? So they meet up, what is it, Lemon Drops and Twinkle Shine. And they... They reminisce a bit, and it seems like Twilight's like, okay, it's okay. Was I a good friend? No. But then I learned I became a better person, and it's not like I left this wake of destruction in, like, in my past. I don't like how I said that. It's not like I lost, left destruction in my wake as I left. I'm good. Also, what about Moon Dancer? I think one of them brings them up first. She's like, I'm sorry, who the fuck is Moon Dancer? Moon Dancer, as you might remember from episode one, Spike specifically says like this was going to be a present for Moon Dancer and throwing Moon Dancer's party and whatnot. There's actually like some flashbacks to episode one in this episode, which I just think is fucking neat. And 
Turns out, Twilight not showing up to Moondancer's party kind of fucked her up. Moondancer was part of that friend group, but it seems like the way I see it is, while she was part of the group, Twilight was her friend. Which is something I really do understand and get into. Like, there's even in the friend group I have here, like with our Oklahomies, there have been times like I have brought someone into the group and they were my friend. And then, you know, like when they got more ingratiated and got to know people more, then they became like a part of the group as a whole. It's like, yeah, they will hang out with people without me needing to be there. People will call them up to go hang out with them and I don't need to be there. And it's great. I love that shit. I love having a big diverse group of friends. But Moondancer was Twilight's friend more than the other three. At least that's how Moondancer felt. So when Twilight didn't show up, she's like, look, this is the one time I'm actually trying to be a friend and throw myself out there and not just be obsessed with my studies and my books, which is something, the one thing I really bond with Twilight over, even though she's better than me, but it's okay. And then not only did my one real friend not show up, she didn't even say goodbye. So it's been, according to this, I don't know, like two years, two and a half, a year and a half, somewhere around there. If we assume each season is about a year, which is kind of the vibe that I generally get from it. It's been like five years, which fuck damn it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm thinking of Ziggy Stardust. We got five years. It's been five years, but it's been about five years ish. Which I think makes Moon Dancers just reclusive list. Like she is now the Hermit Arcana. Again, I can't escape Persona. It makes more sense. Like I could still buy it, but like, yeah, this kind of hits harder if you think this has been several years. So Twilight wants to fix that shit. And at first, Moon Dancers is like, dude, I don't care. I don't care. At one point, Twilight uses a spell to like actually walk into Moon Dancers book. And I'm like, that's fucking cool. I know I've seen a comic of her doing that, and then Moondancer just erased her horn and wings and just threw it back on the shelf. And I was like, fuck. That comic lives in my head rent-free. That kind of fucked me up thinking about that. It's just so... That case is Twilight just stuck in the book forever, like, until someone opens it, until someone can... Oh, wow. Oh, fuck. <laughs> like, it... I've, I've definitely lost sleep, but it's like contemplating that kind of shit but anyway eventually twilight gets to the point where like she invites moon dancer out to hang out with the girls and they almost have a good time but moon dancer is not and if you look one table over starlight glimmer is just there like you don't see her face because she's holding a menu but it's like yeah i know that i know that fucking hair color that you got I know, like, that's clearly Glim Glam. Oh, she's on the prowl. She's stalking Twilight, isn't she? Ha! Huh. Ha, huh, this is fucking interesting. Uh, eventually, Twilight realizes that, like, what I want to do is I want to throw a party for Moon. Like, I want to throw Moon Dancer's party as an apology, and it's something we can do to kind of help her move past this. She calls him backup, which, of course, is Pinky. And Pinky's like, Minuet! And she's like, Pinky! How do you guys know each other? Well, I mean, she comes over to Ponyville all the time because Minuet is a frequent background character. So are the other two. They specifically mentioned that, yeah, Lyra was part of our friend group. She still is. She just moved out to Ponyville. So whenever you see us in the background, it's because we're there visiting Lyra. You can say hi to us, Twilight. You just never do. <laughs> Whoops. But they throw the party for Moon Dancer and... Moon Dancer, like, gets really mad at Twilight for breaking her heart, essentially, but they, they're able to have forgiveness, and Twilight maxes out the Hermit Arcana, and she never re- I don't remember if she says this at any point, but it's very clear that this is- Moon Dancer is what Twilight would be if she never met her friends, which is, again, one thing I really like about Wonderbolt Academy, it's this is what- Lightning Dust is Rainbow Dash if she didn't meet her friends. I like that. We don't always get characters like that. Like, Pinky and uh, Cheese Sandwich. It's not like a this is Pinky if she never met her friends. It's just 
male version of Pinkie Pie. I don't think Fluttershy ever really gets a version of herself like that. I guess Rarity kind of does with Suri, but I don't feel like Suri is like, this is Rarity without her friends. It's just, she's a bitch and an awful person. Like, she is the opposite of Rarity, but I don't think Rarity would have ever become her, you know? <laughs> okay. Um, and then Twilight, her opposite, or, or I mean, yeah, anyways, that, that's what Moon Dancer is. And I, I think it works super well. I may not be doing this episode justice as I've been talking about it. It's one of the best episodes in the season. It's maybe one of the best in the whole show. I actually love this episode. I didn't cry, but I was like, I'm I'm just getting kind of emotional during this episode. Mending Fences got hands. Moon Dancer kind of got hands. This episode's great. I don't think I would say... I don't think I could put it in the same tier as Slice of Life. Though. Like, I feel like it's in the same tier as the map. Which I think means I have to move this down. As much as I do love this episode, I'm like, look. Season 5 got hands. It got fucking hooves, man. I think this tier might not have a lot of episodes in it because the quality like the if the s tier is for you are in contention to be my favorite and we have an episode this good and like this good it's there's not going to be a lot of spots let's see if do princesses dream of a magic sheep is it magic sheep or electric i think it is magic sheep Anyway, it's the Tantibus episode. Let's see if that can compete for a spot up there. So, this episode, Luna, there, there's this thing called the Tantibus, which haunts her dreams. And it gives her these horrible dreams about becoming Nightmare Moon and being this horrible person. And it's something Luna created. It is a manifestation of her own guilt to remind herself of what she did. Of the time where she let her jealousy and her envy and her fear like again to use i don't want to keep using persona terms but to use a persona term when she like fell victim to her own shadow and she doesn't want that to ever happen again so she is making sure that it doesn't the tantamist escapes from her dream into the dreams of the main six so luna is overseeing their dreams in a sleepover and I'll be like, yeah, Applejack is having this nice dream about a big old apple. And then I actually don't remember if the apples are trying to eat her. I think it's like some shit happens and tries to eat the apples. Or it's like the apples are getting um, rotten super fast, I think. Rarity is attacked by dresses. Fluttershy is Angel's pet. She's like, it's nice to be the pet for once. And then gets attacked by a demon angel. I don't remember what Twilight's dream is. Pinky is just a bunch of random shit, which I love. It's like, yeah, it's I have this dream for a couple seconds, and then this, and then this, and that's just great. And then, yo, know, she's getting attacked by Cake. Rainbow Dash is fighting Changelings, and Luna's like, oh, no, the Tantibus has already made your dream horrible. No, I'm kicking ass. This is my favorite dream. And then it turns into a nightmare of a bunch of cute flowers singing Barney songs. Because it's literally the, I love you, you love me, we're a happy family. It's not the lyrics, but it's that tune. Like, oh my gosh, they fucking did it. Like, if, if you watch Dragon Ball Super, Rainbow Dash's nightmare is freeze as hell. And it's so fucking funny. But, um, because Pinky had a dream about Ponyville and the people in Ponyville, the ponies in Ponyville... The Tantibus is able to infect their dreams. So there's this giant shared dream and everyone becomes a dream warrior where like Rainbow Dash and Applejack become their power pony selves. Fluttershy starts riding the evil demon version of Angel. Big Mac has a Sailor Moon transformation sequence. It becomes Alicorn. Scootaloo gets big ass wings. Filthy Rich becomes a superhero who's like using money like fucking lasers and i i don't know that's pretty fun i actually like that a lot 
But alas, none of that is enough to defeat the Tantibus, which has grown to, like, giant, enormous size. It's gonna go into reality, but because Luna's guilt is still too strong, so they tell Luna to forgive herself, and you're not Nightmare Moon anymore. You're a better person, and she's able to forgive herself, and that is what defeats the Tantibus, and that is the episode. <sighs> Let me get some water. I feel like I've been talking for a while. Ugh. Okay. Pros and cons. The pros of this episode. I really like, like, the lighting in this. Like, the actual look of the Tantibus when it gets giant, I think is really cool. I think the Dream Warrior shenanigans are pretty fun. I just wish Pinky did more with it. Like, there's a point where, like, it tears a hole in, like, at the seam and warp and weft and shit, and Rarity makes a giant needle to sew. And I'm like, that's pretty fun. That seems like the kind of shit Rarity would do. Pinkie Pie is in a dream world. Why is she not using this to maximum efficiency? I want to know the, like, oh my god, Pinkie should be doing insane shit. And she just does it. Like, she doesn't even turn into her power pony. Stuff like that feels like a missed opportunity. But I do think most of the Dream Warrior shit we get is really fun. I like what they're going for in the moral a lot. Which, kind of like I was saying with the Quest for Games, is something about self-love. It's about self-forgiveness. People make mistakes. We're only human. But we can learn from our mistakes. We can become better people. But one of the most important steps on the road to self-recovery is self-forgiveness you cannot hate yourself forever you cannot blame yourself forever to be able to let go you have to forgive yourself and if you are a better person if that growth has stuck forgiving yourself doesn't mean that you will lapse it means you can move forward that is really the theme and the moral and i think it's really good the cons of the episode. Number one, where are the Crusaders? That feels like a weird con to have, but... Yeah, I mean, they've had... Each of them has had an episode with Luna. Where Luna has helped them overcome something. With Scootaloo, I am helping you overcome your fear. Specifically your fear that you are not good enough when it comes to your quote-unquote sister. Huh. You know, that sounds like something Luna probably had to deal with in relation to her, like, in regards to her relationship with Celestia. With Sweetie Belle, helping you overcome your feelings of inadequacy and being outshined by your sister. Huh. Huh. Something you know Luna has very much had to overcome. <laughs> Apple Bloom. All of your fears of, uh, like, your cutie mark. Including being ostracized from your family. Huh. Given the fact that the whole Nightmare Moon thing is that I think my cutie mark and, like, my destiny is not as good as my sister's. And I was actually ostracized by my sister. Huh. You know... That's maybe, in a way, kind of some similar to something Luna went through. Wouldn't it be really fucking fitting about when Luna is at one of her worst places mentally and emotionally? The three people she really helped get through their shit would help her? Because that's what it is at the end of the day. It's not, yeah, we got the Elements of Harmony, we beat the Tantibus, or we got some MacGuffin. It is... We helped Luna get to a healthier place. To understand that she is not the person that she used to be. The person who would do this shit. And it coming from the main six. It's not that it feels empty. Because they know Luna. At least like kind of somewhat sort of. Twilight in particular knows her a little bit better. But the Crusaders have a more intimate relationship with her. And it feels like, yeah, this is what it was probably leading up to. It's she helped them being completely altruistic about it. Now they want to return the favor and help her. And it just doesn't happen. I don't think Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle had dialogue in this. 
this episode. What the fuck? Oh, there's a giant derby that Spike rides. Sorry, that that's a pro. I, I, I just like giant derby. Um, But to me, the lack of the Crusaders feels like such a missed opportunity given what would this like what was building up to this episode there's also this one line when well okay i'll get to that put quick pin in there like i said i like the idea of the tantibus being luna's guilt i think that's kind of cool and interesting and the fact that luna is saying i did this really horrible thing that i can't take back and i want to make sure i never do that again I like that. Quick question. What exactly does she feel guilty for? For turning into Nightmare Moon. Okay. For raising the moon early. Okay. For getting into a fight with her sister. Okay. That's it. I watched Princess Twilight Sparkle last season. Like we saw all that Nightmare Moon did. It wasn't much. Like, it was cool. It looked really cool. And again, the idea of Luna saying, I don't want to become that person is fine. I love that. But when she's like, my guilt, my guilt. She specifically says, like, all the things I did to a question. I'm like, dude, you kind of didn't. I don't know. Like, Discord would have more shit to feel guilty of. You didn't really do much. Ah. <sighs> Again, if from just the pure personal standpoint of I feel ashamed and don't want to do, become that person again, I get it. From the perspective of look at the destruction I left in my wake, that part doesn't work for me because there really was no destruction left. Pulling the pin out, there's that one line when Luna's saying like my guilt, my guilt, and they're saying but you're a better person. Blah, 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 blah. I think it's Rainbow Dash who says, then just stop feeling sad. Which, A, really? You're gonna say just stop feeling sad when you tried to stop the advent of winter because you didn't want to say goodbye to your pet for a couple months? Rainbow Dash, you were not the right person to say that. But anyways, it's... It's not a good line. That's not... It's not the thing you should ever fucking say to somebody. Then just stop being sad. Why don't... I don't know. Why don't you just be happy? Why don't you just cheer up? It's not that easy. It's really not. At least for it to stick and be consistent. And there's that part of me that goes, I understand what they're trying to do here with the moral of self-forgiveness and moving forward. But after Rainbow Dash said that line, I'm like, is that kind of what is happening here? It's not just, Luna, you are genuinely a better person and we have all seen it, so you should be able to forgive yourself? Or is it, uh, yeah, so Luna just kind of decided to stop being sad and that's what worked. I, I don't think it is because I think it is more nuanced than that. But I can't unsee it. And it bothers me. It bothers me immensely. And I'm like, man, this was such a cool idea for an episode. And man, there was some really cool shit that happened. But wow, it, uh, I don't know. I think the Crusaders not there actually kind of brings it down for me because it feels like it was written for that and then it just wasn't and there is that part of me that goes is that what happened did she just stop being sad i don't i don't like how that makes me feel man we're we're, we're getting some c's here episodes this season because i don't think i want to move it like it's not it's not here there's too much good shit there's too much good shit maybe but i don't think so i think it's like i'm there's a lot to love and there's a lot to really think about it's here or it's here 
Maybe it's here. I think that's a good spot. And speaking of which, segue, I think that's a good spot to stop for now. I I mean, I'm going to do the rest of these. I might do them later today. I might just say, fuck it. I, I'm going to go eat something. Like, eat, drink some water, use the bathroom, make sure I'm all Gucci. And then I might just continue and do the next 13. But I am going to take a break for now. I will talk to you guys later. Uh, this is Tuesday. Have a good... Have a good Pokemon fucking Z got announced today, day. Because, uh... Yeah, I'm still excited about that. It finally happened. We got Legends Kalos and Pokemon Z. And it's... Oh, I'm so excited. But, uh... We'll talk about that. I, I don't know when. But we'll definitely talk about these, uh... A little bit later.